the Accent Benchtop's Working Dog Rally was round five of the East Coast Classic Rally Series. And last year's winner was back after missing the previous round. It's been a couple of months since we had a run in the car now, so we're really looking forward to it and uh, see how we go, I guess. And uh, yeah, there's a good field here today with Clay and Nathan Quinn and Ryan Smart and a few people, so it'll be a bit of a push on, I think. Yeah, the whole thing is to try and get through to the end of the day and see where we are. Dermody and co-driver Owen Moynihan were fast out of the blocks and in second outright after stage one. One kilometre. But it was Nathan Quinn who'd take the opening stage, setting the scene for a classic battle. Ryan Smart was third quickest and then won stage two Brown Dog. Smart and co-driver Hugh Reardon-Smith backed that up with another win in Stage 3. They won Heat 1 and they were in the lead of the East Coast Classics, but the car wasn't 100%. We've got a couple of little niggly problems at the moment we'll fix at service, but um, yeah, this morning's been just clean and safe really, uh, just getting through the stages. We've never been here, never seen any of the roads or anything, so it's all a bit new to us. The issues were enough of a concern that the Datsun Stanza team withdrew to ensure they didn't do any further damage to the car. For Tom Dermody in the RS1800 Escort, he had big dramas in Stage 2. A bit slow on Stage 1, off the pace a bit, but then on Stage 2, halfway through, we lost the rear wheel. So that we had to go and rob nuts off every other hub and get the spare on and go again, so I think we lost probably 10, 12 minutes. Brown Dog was clearly a problematic stage, with Nathan Quinn and Ray Winwood Smith having their own dramas. Yeah, the bonnet came up, the hinges gave way, and uh, at about 185 uh, bonnets popped up. Luckily it was on a straight piece of road. And yeah, a bit of a scary moment, but uh, we got through it, had to fix the bonnet and limp out, and then went from there. With so many issues with the front runners, this left Clay Badnock and Katrina Kelly to pick up the pieces. They were second in the heat behind the stanza of Smart. Another team without any dramas was the Toyota Corolla of Craig Aggio and Megan Benson, battling with the bigger Toyota in front. They were just two seconds behind Badnock Salika to be third in the heat. With the dramas behind them, Dermody in the Escort was quickest in the repeat of Red Dog, And then Quinn in the RX2 went on to win the repeat of Brown Dog. There was a battle developing for the Heat 2 glory. Badenock was keeping up the pace, but was finding it difficult to win a stage. He was top two and three for the entire second heat. The roads are super fast um, and, and quite slippery either side, like there's just a tram track of, um, of grip and you get it out of there and it's, <laughs> it's quite... The first loop was pretty scary, I thought, because it was just so fast and get it wrong and you're in trouble. But anyway, we're, uh, we're enjoying it and getting faster as the day goes on. Badenoch's consistency during Heat 2 would be rewarded with a third place, but the Salika team would reap the ultimate reward for a consistent and reliable rally. Badenoch was top dog, winning the East Coast Classic component of the event. Quinn and Winwood Smith probably wish they could go back in time and make sure that bonnet of theirs was secure. Had it not been for that small misadventure, they would have won the event. They were first in Heat 2, second outright, and remarkably were fourth quickest in the final stage, beating many of the top state competitors in four-wheel drive cars. And all this without a windscreen and the cold winter air and dust blowing in his face. Ah, uh, look, when you drive a rotary, it's never cold, but um, the struggle was the air coming in behind the glasses and the yeah, air wrecked me. Oh, and the water splash. I tried to hit it a bit slow this time, but uh, still got a good wash. But yeah, it's good fun. And it's a shame people are upset with the dust, but I still froth the night and I think we should do more of it and, and, and just deal with it. Everybody's got to go slow. Maybe if the roads weren't so fast, 
it wouldn't be so risky, but I had an absolute, I had a mad dog time. Adgio and Benson in the KE30 Corolla, they were in third outright. Third in heat two was Dermody and Moynihan in the Escort. They needed points for the overall series and scraped enough together in the final heat to put them back on the top of the leaderboard. 300 metres crest, then 20 metres, a right 45. Another classic car competing was the Datsun 260Z of Wayne Hoy. Whilst not eligible for the East Coast Classic Rally Series, he was the quickest classic car in the opening two stages and fifth fastest in the overall rally. 60 grid. 200 metres, caution, road goes left. His son Clayton won the event and clearly there's rally pedigree in this family. That's, that's better. Tidy it up a bit, mate. Had he entered the East Coast Classic section of the rally, he would have won with a significant margin. And all this with engine issues. We blew a head gasket four stages ago. Um, the last two now, we've had to really nurse it, uh, carrying plenty of water to put in it. Um, we were here, that's the main thing, so... Jesse Heitman and Grant Burrish were fourth in a 1983 Mazda RX-7. And fifth was the Ford Escort of Keith Frackrell and Claire Buccini. There's still three rounds of the East Coast Classic Rally Series left leaving the series well and truly undecided. And the final round is the Alpine Rally, a classic event that will likely be the deciding round. <laughs>